Turbo furnace day four. We got a plan for the door, and we got an air compressor and a cutoff saw, and we're just gonna start getting right into it here, uh, putting the door together, and we'll show you the steps as we go. All right, so I'm just gonna grind the old door off here to make way for the new door. So I was just grinding along this edge right here, and actually, it's totally smooth, but I think the heat has sort of like done something to the steel right here where it doesn't want to come with a, a smooth polish like the rest of it, even though I was grinding on it pretty good. Basically, we are making this a little flange. Um, and we're trying to get all these little bits of angle iron nice and square. And then what we're gonna do is we have this piece of 10 gauge plate steel and we're actually just gonna drill some holes in here. And then we are going to run these guys through it um, and then we'll weld this bolt actually onto here and it's actually just going to stick right through and then we have this piece of plywood in here so that when we're doing the welding on the frame we can actually drill holes through bolt all this stuff get it totally locked down and then when, when we're welding we'll just kind of um, this little bit of plywood gives us some standoff so that we can do that weld without accidentally welding to the plate steel that's underneath of it and it will probably contaminate the weld a little bit because it's gonna burn but it'll be fine we have finally got this frame flange thing laid up and ground to spec and we're just gonna tack it up um, make sure that it then fits in the tank which we have spent actually quite a lot of time already trying to do um, and then probably get some burritos. All right, Vincent's over there welding on the door frame. We haven't really made a lot of video today just because it's just been kind of a lot of messing around with the chop saw and trying to get angles right. It's like not really super exciting, um, but the basic structure of the door's there. We're now welding it together. Uh, we have a bunch of through bolts going through there. Um, and just looking at it, it looks like it's probably gonna be a pretty good seal, but we did say that about the last door that we made, so. All right, cool, so we got all the corners welded and that's looking pretty good. So we're just going to be tacking these bolts down so we're cleaning up the spots right next to them with the grinder. So we just want to make sure that this whole thing stays super flat while we're welding on it so that the seal stays good. It'll be fine. Just, it's kind of a tough weld. There's a couple of places where we made holes. Um, in some places we were able to get a good feed, but um, in other places as you can see, not so much. We got some pretty good holes over here, uh, so what we're gonna do is just run down to Home Depot and maybe just get some mild steel rod and see if we can fill those back in. So we got these holes filled in um, with these ultra crappy welds that we got going on. Um, it's like pretty gnarly. We did actually just end up going to Home Depot and getting these little steel rods and we just used those to just kind of fill in some of the extra material that was missing. And uh, it's gonna be fine. And then we've just got like these eye bolts that we're gonna put on here. We're just gonna tack weld the eye bolts into those couplers. Uh, and then we can use just like a screwdriver or something to crack those off later when we're ready to open and close the door. And we should have a pretty good seal and then we might fire it tonight. I don't know, we'll see. Well, so the door's not coming off super easily. Kind of having to pry it off. Might have to ream out the holes on the bolts here a little bit. Hopefully we won't bend it too much in this process. All right, so we got that pried off and it's honestly looking pretty flat along most of the dimensions here. So I think we're probably gonna end up getting a pretty good seal with it. Yeah, it's not too bad. Well, it's about 11.30 at night, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do this. Vincent's loading it up with some paper and some wood. We got everything set up. We got the boss wad out here. And then what happened was we tried to run it and the camera failed, but the door totally worked, although it uh, blew the gasket out pretty quickly and we weren't able to develop any more boost after that. And so we just gave up for the night. Okay, so we just saw a cool thing. Um, we were playing with the oil pump and just kind of like playing with the pressure regulator. And we finally got it to do this thing where it like it responds really rapidly to the inputs that we give it with the pump. Uh, bypass valve. And I think it's because we basically got the air out of the line. So if we speed up the pump, less oil goes through. But if I reef on it, all of a sudden a lot more comes through. All right, so it's.
it's day, I don't even know which, on the turbo furnace. We now have a pretty good pressure vessel. We got it to work out. Uh, I think the, the only problem was that just the setup of the turbo furnace just really was pretty hard to use. Uh, we kind of have like oil going everywhere and like puddles of water and like electrical lines and you know saw horses and all this stuff and it's just like super scary to try and spool it with the vacuum cleaner so it's been a couple weeks and we are about to try some uh, more stuff. The main thing for today is that we're going to get a frame welded up for it so we got that dimensioned, we got all the steel for that. Vincent's back at the place welding on it right now. And I'm headed over to Park Rose uh, to go get fittings so that we can instrument the chamber pressure and the oil pressure uh, that we're that we're developing with the turbo furnace. Uh, and then we're gonna have some idea about like if we're getting enough oil pressure on the turbo or not, and then also what kind of boost that we're making with it. So we just pretty much spent the whole day putting together this frame and we got the turbo furnace up on there on the bike trailer and it looks pretty awesome. It actually fits pretty good. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is just actually get all this stuff hooked up here um, and close off the oil loop and then I'm also just going to add this like little oil pressure gauge um, and we have another one that we're just going to weld a little weld on. Uh, pipe fitting on there so that we can instrument the boost pressure that we're developing. We already got the oil rigged up. Last well of the day where the grass is on fire. Okay, I'm going to turn on the water. Alright, I'm going to turn on the oil. Alright, you want to start it? You want me to start it? How about you start it this time? Okay. It's a water toy. Cool.
good. <laughs> that, that got scared real fast. <laughs> <laughs> What's the highest boost you saw? Five PSI? Yeah, I was like, Yeah, I was like, I'm on, I'm Good! This is such a good problem. <laughs> it so developed fire. thrust. It, it developed so thrust. <laughs> no, um, so when I, when I went, when I stopped to let go, it was actually sucking the vacuum onto it. Yeah, I bet. And I had to pull it down. Uh, also, we blew our gasket. Uh, did we? Yeah. So what we've done is we have opened up the turbo furnace after that hella catastrophic run that was pretty awesome we've been talking about it for a while but what we found is that the big stuff the big pieces of wood are just charred and in fact there are some places where you can see uncharred wood like right there so this is just like really had like a pretty thin layer of oxidation on it i would say and like it has been so hot that it hasn't really it just evaporates the, how do you say, volatiles in the wood and leaves just a really nice char. <laughs> and yeah, there's a lot of other big stuff in there. As you saw in the video, the turbo furnace did fall over. Uh, that was pretty scary for a second. And uh, this is where the, um, the turbine side hit. And you can actually see that there's some dirt right here where it contacted the ground. And then what had happened is that you can see that it was like excavated all this dirt in kind of almost like a pneumatic fashion and blew away all this grass. Um, and it melted some of the, like our electrical connections. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to replace the battery charger cord. That's not so good. And the hose melted off the vacuum and we blew a lot of grass onto the lawn or onto the concrete patio here and actually all over our workspace. So this is like really quite far away at this point. And the house is back there. So yeah, a lot of detritus is pretty good. All of the actual turbo furnace itself we got back on there. Hopefully the MDF will stand up to this huge oil stain, we'll see. But other than that, nothing on here is actually damaged and we just ran the oil pump for longer and cooled off the turbo. The water was actually quite hot, which we hadn't seen before, so that was cool too. Because the turbo furnace fell over, I think it ate some of its fuel. There's like one whole side of it way torn back. So see that one's really long. That one's really short. Because it's busted. So it's got to be out of balance. Okay. I mean, we could probably run it, you know, whatever. Definitely. I'm definitely going to run it. 